coming up on Seminole Sports Magazine. Some might say he's a gentle giant, but Eddie Goldman's gameplay as a defensive lineman will prove otherwise once he's on the field. Also, the women's basketball team goes way out of their comfort zone to build some team unity for a chance to reach out and help others. Then, winning championships while coaching the men's and women's team in volleyball is quite a gem on a resume and Florida State has that person as the new assistant coach. We'll meet Ryan McGuire. And we'll look back at an FSU Baseball Hall of Famer, Matt Diaz, and the impact he made on the field and the impact he's making now. These stories and more on Seminole Sports Magazine. Hello everyone, I'm Scott Kodak. First up, from a humble core to a dynamic defensive talent, Eddie Goldman continues to thrive off of his strong upbringing. Goldman comes from a home where it wasn't about what you want, but about what you need. Where success is not a handout, but something you earn. Heather Biltock has more on this DC native who has developed into a terror on the field. The 30 yard line need to reach the 37. Here's the snap. And the quarterback, Sousa, is going to be Sousa Fong. FSU defensive lineman Eddie Goldman is a force to be reckoned with. But it wasn't always this way. In fact, Goldman's football journey started a lot later than his fellow Seminoles. It started at um, Blow Pierce, that was my middle school. And uh, my coach by the name of Coach uh, Rogers, he um, basically, you know, the typical, you know, put the flyer on the uh, bulletin board and I saw it and I just tried it out and made the team. Goldman developed quickly. Starting as an offensive lineman, he soon learned his talent was better suited for the defensive side of the ball. It wasn't long before his skills on the gridiron sparked the attention of Friendship Collegiate Academy in Washington, D.C. My eighth grade year, Coach Raheem came down to my middle school and, you know, he recruited me, basically. And, you know, I just fell in love with the school and uh, I went to Friendship. He played uh, varsity football in the ninth grade and, uh, you know, how explode he he can he can probably play the two guard for the basketball team you know he, he's he's that athletic so when you mix size with athleticism and he has power you know I knew coaching you know coaching him was going to be one of the easiest things I had. But even while at the school of his dreams, Goldman still had challenges, and no matter what obstacles he faced, he always had someone special supporting him. It, she didn't like like you know tell me to go out there. But once I did, you know, she supported me 100%. With his senior year coming to a close and his mother's support, Eddie made the biggest decision of his football career. Right. I'm going to let you do it however you're ready to do it, but there's a lot of people excited to see who you're going to pick. The number one defensive tackle in the class, Alabama, Auburn, Florida State. Eddie, where are you going to play college football? This fall, I will attend Florida State University. Yeah! Coaches were out of their seats. Fans were floored with excitement. Florida State had landed the top defensive tackle in the 2012 recruiting class. Best of luck, Eddie Goldman. Did you always know that he was going to go to Florida State? No, not up until, um, I want to say, the weekend. Because it was always, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Now in his second season playing for a top team in the nation, this six foot four, 300 pound sophomore still remembers his humble beginning. Because my mother couldn't always support me financially, so that's where my grandmother and my aunt would step in and you know make sure I had everything I needed. His teammates say it's his quiet demeanor and selfless attitude that makes Eddie one of the most dangerous players on the field. Just his, uh, what he brings to the table of the game is just his quickness and athleticism. Just, he's a big body and he uses it very well when he's going against a guy. You don't need guys that's selfish and you know cocky and all bringing up like, oh, I did this and I did that. You know, you never get that from Eddie. You never get, you know, you never hear him like, oh, I made this play or I did this right here. It's a terror on the field. Eddie holds tight to his motto. Toughness beats talent. Just reminds me, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very talented person, but if I, if I, if I don't work hard, as hard as I can, I, I won't reach my full potential. Goldman says success is not a handout. He knows it's something he must work for. I'm Heather Biltock for Seminole Sports Magazine. 
Eddie Goldman's prowess attracts the attention of the whole Seminole Nation. Whether he's breaking through a tackle or making a sack, keep an eye out for number 90 on the defensive line. When we come back, the FSU women's basketball team's trip to another continent shows them a world of adventure. Also, we'll take a look at a major contributor to the record books of Florida State baseball, Matt Diaz. Seminole Sports Magazine is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. Welcome back to Seminole Sports Magazine. The off season for the Florida State women's basketball team isn't really off. This summer, the women loaded up on a jet and left the country for a little international competition and a lot of team building. As Aaron Lish tells us, the players learned from more than layups and rebounds. It wasn't all about the fundamentals this off season for Florida State women's basketball team. Lady Knowles became internationals. Visiting two countries in a team building exercise, they'll never forget. There were safaris in Africa and zip lining in Italy. A lot of us was like nervous and scared because of the view and it was like on a mountain and a lot of us never been zip lining and the fact that we had to like hold on, you weren't like really zipped up. Like I expected to be like the zip lining laying down. That's the only kind I've seen but once we were going down, it was fun. When visiting Africa, the team was able to get up and close to the natives of the land. We went on a safari and it was like, like out in the wild. Cause I've been to a safari like in Disney and stuff like that, but it's not like you're really there. Like we got off the Jeep and like got closer to the animals, took pictures. <laughs> Uh, we started freaking out when this ostrich came. We're like, the man was like, oh, they attacked. So we was like, oh, snap, get back in the Jeep, get back in the Jeep. So. The culture wasn't the only thing foreign to the Knolls on their junket across the Atlantic. The Knolls had to learn the rules of international basketball. Uh, the rest were different. Like, some of the rules were different. Like, they had to put it on the ground first and then go up, or so they would call a travel. So it was kind of hard, like, adjusting to some of their rules. Senegal was really big, really tall, um, strong. They were grown women, if you would say. Um, so that was definitely a physical game. It was very, very hot in the gym. A lot of people there, but um, yeah, they definitely, they played together. It was really obvious that they'd been playing together for a very long time. The Knowles conducted basketball clinics with the local youths and visited an orphanage. The team learned as much as they talked. We were at a clinic of doing clinic for 30 or 40 girls and boys, and at the end we did a question and answer. The last question, one girl, she asked, um, you know, why do you guys always come over here and show us all these good things and these cool stuff? Like, why don't you ever take any of us back to show us what a perfect world looks like? And we were just like, wow. It was a huge humbling experience because like I saw a lot of like less fortunate kids and stuff like that. There's not even like a front door to a lot of houses, like not even roofs. Like a lot of kids don't even sleep on beds, they sleep like on a piece of cardboard. And the lady in charge of all that was like talking to us about it a little bit and it really shocked me when she told me that there was like over 80 babies that were like not even one year old yet that was there. Everybody took a step back, like, we are extremely fortunate and blessed to have everything we have, and not everywhere it's like that. Yeah, our um, kind of saying this year is Ubuntu, which means I am because we are, and just kind of like stating that um, you're, you know, we are who we are because we all are, and we all represent something bigger than ourselves, and we have these bracelets we would just give them out to different kids, and so a lot of kids have these over in Africa right now. <laughs> the Lady Knowles spent the off-season abroad and began to build a foundation that will serve them back home at FSU. Ubuntu, I am because we are. One motto describing one team united under one common goal, winning. I'm Erin Lish for Seminole Sports Magazine. Of course, while they were abroad, the Knowles did what they do best, win. They defeated the Italian All-Stars 85-51 to and also beat the German professional team, the Chemcast, 81-76. to 
When we return to Seminole Sports Magazine, FSU brings in someone with the sweet taste of victory and a few championships to help lead the women's volleyball team. Hey there, Seminole fans. I'm Jenny Knipe, here to catch you up on all the latest in Florida State Athletics with your Seminole update. On the gridiron Saturday night, the Knolls earned their third victory of the season with a 54-6 win over Bethune-Cookman. Linebacker Telvin Smith got things started in the first quarter with a 68-yard interception return for the first touchdown of the game. Jameis Winston lived up to his nickname, Famous Jameis, by going 10 for 19 for 148 yards and two touchdowns. The first of which came off an incredible scramble where Winston broke two tackles and successfully hit Calvin Benjamin in the end zone. Devontae Freeman added his second straight 100-yard rushing performance with 112 yards on just 10 carries as the Knolls churned out 492 yards of total offense. The number 17 volleyball team brought home a win over Auburn in a five-set thriller on Saturday. Head coach Chris Poole switched things up a bit by adding some newer players to the mix. Freshman setter Haley Luke set out to show the team she was ready to play with the best by contributing 25 assists and three digs. The team hits the road next weekend to take on Syracuse and Boston College. The number three soccer team added to their school record 25 match home winning streak with big victories over number five North Carolina and NC State. On Wednesday night, Jamia Fields blasted a perfect shot in the 83rd minute for a 1-0 win over the Tar Heels. And on Sunday, English native Marta Bukowska-Matthews carried the Knolls to a victory over NC State with a game-winning goal in the 87th minute off a free kick. Senior goalkeeper Kelsey was fantastic, picking up her seventh shutout of the season as the Knolls picked up their eighth victory of 2013. The team looks to remain undefeated on the season when they travel to Clemson to take on the Tigers Sunday afternoon. What a week it has been for the Garnet and Gold. I'm Jenny Knight and this has been your seminal update. The Florida State Indoor Volleyball Program welcomes a new associate head coach, Ryan McGuire. Coach McGuire is a leader with a history of winning big games. Being both the men and women's head coach back at California Baptist, he's won nine national championships. FSU is excited to have him and is looking forward to the continued success the program is experiencing. Here is Martha Jaimes with a look at how Coach McGuire builds championship teams. Head coach Chris Poole welcomed Coach Ryan McGuire, the new associate head coach to the FSU women's volleyball team. I knew he had had a lot of success, and I was very excited when I found out that he would have some interest in this position. And what Coach Poole means by a lot of success is winning nine national championships. But winning didn't come easy for Coach McGuire. Back at California Baptist, he had to juggle being the head coach of both the men's and women's volleyball teams. One, I wasn't smart or wise back then for doing that. You know, after doing it 10 years and then just being able to focus in on one team, I kick myself for doing it that long. It was busy. It, it, days started before 6 a.m. and I'd be home after 10 p.m. It wasn't the ideal situation, but he learned a lot and won a lot. In his 10 years at California Baptist, he won three women's and six men's NAIA national championships. But the dedication and commitment to bringing success to two teams pulled him away from what was important, his wife and family. So instead of jeopardizing his success on the court for more time with his family, Coach McGuire found a solution that allowed him to focus on both of his passions. He asked his wife to be his assistant coach. Coaching together, I, I really, I think the biggest benefit was simply for our marriage. In the times we weren't coaching together, we really hardly ever saw each other. You know, neither one of us want to talk volleyball when we're home with the children. Not only did Jennifer play a big role in his life as his wife and assistant coach, 
She also played a big role in his hiring at Florida State. I actually recruited his wife back in 1995. Now, she ended up choosing Hawaii over Arkansas, but we became very close as friends during the, the recruitment process, and therefore that led to a, to a friendship with Coach Mack also. It was this unexpected friendship that made Coach McGuire's transition to Florida State smooth and effortless. At the same time, because we have been friends, we already had communicated a lot in the past, so I think that made it a little easier for him. Coach McGuire has a huge impact on the lives of the players he coaches. He helps them develop more than just volleyball skills. He mentors them, and they know that even after they graduate, Coach McGuire is just a phone call away. I'm excited second time around, you know, to get back to my core principles and working with them and doing it here at Florida State. All of the new things that he's teaching us, um, at first we were kind of like, ah, I don't know what this is and why we're doing it. But as we've been going along, I see how, um, how we can apply it to game-like situations. Even though his new coaching style has taken some adjusting to, the girls have learned to appreciate the core principles he's instilling in them. And he'll say something, you know, hey, it's all right, you got it, you know, make this the best practice of your life. He says that before every practice, and I love that. I believe God's got a purpose for everybody on this earth, and uh, I just want to be a great assistant coach to him and the plans, the plans that he has. Coach McGuire was given a gift, the gift to impact lives, develop character, and build relationships. Coaching is a part of who he is, and he will do whatever it takes to hold on to those timeless principles and continue to make FSU's program one of the best in the country. I'm Martha Jaimez for Seminole Sports Magazine. You can catch Coach McGuire and the women's volleyball team at the next home game. They'll take on Maryland Friday night, October 11th. When we come back, having your dad work with the Detroit Tigers and later your brother playing for the Seminoles, Matt Diaz was destined to be a baseball great. Seminole Sports Magazine is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. makes someone achieve success is the determination to not quit when you're down. With a list of accolades and college records, Matt Diaz was an inspired individual that did not give up. Let's look back at his exciting story. Matt Diaz grew up around baseball. After his family relocated to Central Florida from Portland, Oregon, Matt spent many afternoons with his dad, Ed, who was the Detroit Tigers spring training chaplain. Ed often took Matt and his older brother, Zach, out of school early to go watch the Tigers during spring practice. It wasn't long before baseball got in his blood and became an important part of his life. Diaz attended Santa Fe Catholic, where he was a four-time all-county selection in high school. He was also named All-Area, All-State, Player of the Year for Polk County, and a TPX High School All-American his senior year. Selecting Florida State to continue his baseball career wasn't that difficult of a choice, since his brother Zach was already a member of the Seminole squad, which made the transition to college life smooth. But making the transition on the field wasn't quite as easy. Matt started his freshman season one for 10 with six strikeouts. For a high school star that always had a batting cage in his backyard and had never gone hitless in 10 at-bats before, it was a depressing start. 
It was senior teammate Brooks Badeau who told Dias this is the same game he'd been playing since he was 10 years old. He just needed to relax and have fun. After Badeau's simple but yet inspiring words, the right fielder ended up being named the Sporting News College Freshman Player of the Year, hitting 390 and driving in 84 runs. His 22 homers eclipsed the freshman record of 17, held by major leaguers Paul Sorrento and J.D. Drew. Matt Diaz had found his place on the Seminole team lineup. Diaz was a major contributor in the success of the top-ranked Seminoles his two seasons. He was named the Atlantic Two Region Most Valuable Player and College Baseball's National Player of the Week. He helped Florida State to the College World Series in 1998 and 1999, including the 99 title game against Miami. One of his most memorable moments during his two-year career at FSU was throwing out a runner from right field in the first inning of the championship game in Omaha. He finished his sophomore season with a list of honors, including ACC Player of the Week, Academic All-American, First Team All-American by the American Baseball Coaches Association, and the National Baseball College Writers Association. His 43 career home runs ranks in the Seminoles' all-time top 10. Matt credits strong leaders in life for keeping him grounded. His brother Zach, who was his teammate and roommate, Coach Dave Van Hallinger, who met with him Tuesday mornings while at FSU, and Clint Purvis, who helped him grow in his faith while at Florida State. After his sophomore year, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays drafted Diaz in the 17th round. He went on to lead the Rays in the minor leagues in hits and extra bases. His professional career led him to Kansas City in 2005, and then the Braves, where he had his first career two-homer game in 2007. He played for the Pittsburgh Pirates, the New York Yankees, and this last spring, the Miami Marlins, before a knee injury sidelined him. On May 31st this past year, Matt underwent microfracture surgery that requires months of rehab. Matt and his wife Leslie grew up just 15 minutes apart in Central Florida, but they didn't meet for the first time until their freshman year at Florida State. After spending a half of a minor league season alone, Matt proposed to Leslie. Today they have three children, Nathan, Anna, and Jake and they are the co-founders of the Matt E. and Leslie Diaz Family Foundation, which aims to glorify God by aiding orphaned and disadvantaged children in Polk County and throughout the world. His annual golf tournament in November funds the Guardian Ad Litem, Parker Street Kids, the snack program at the Boys and Girls Club, and mission work in Uganda. Not only has he made his mark in FSU baseball history, but even now making an impact helping with the needs of others. I'm Scott Kodak, and we'll see you next week on Seminole Sports Magazine.